listeners, welcome to our online Sunday service. We're so glad that you're here and we hope that you and your families will be blessed today. Absolutely. And if this is your first time joining us, we want to send a very warm welcome to you. Say hey in the comments because we would love to meet you. Keep an eye on the prompts throughout the service for ways that you can connect with Enjoy Church. We're excited because tonight we are live streaming our first video podcast. It streams at 7.30 on our YouTube channel and Facebook page. Pastor Shane will be joined by a variety of guests and they'll be talking about some of today's hot topics. We can't wait to see you online. Now we have a great service in store for us. There's praise and worship from our Adore conference earlier this year, a word on praise from Pastor Shane Baxter, and the next episode in the God of Wonders series from our Kidmania team. I love the God of Wonders series from our Kidmania team. So good. And throughout the service, enjoyers, make sure that you're posting in the chats and why not share the service with someone you know will be encouraged by it. Have an awesome service. Enjoy the service. I can see your kindness. I can see you call me to a purpose. I can see your sweetness. You hold me closest when I'm weakest. Jesus deserves for When life is empty, your word is full. You keep your promise. You're not the kind to let me fall.
Hey Enjoyers, welcome to Community Sunday. There have been some very real challenges during this COVID season, and we want to celebrate the incredible work each of our Enjoy Church locations are doing to assist their local communities in navigating these times. Due to the ongoing lockdowns and restrictions, most of our regular communities programs and initiatives have not been able to operate. This has meant our focus has switched to emergency relief, and in particular, the provisioning of food packs and basic essentials. In the last 12 months, you have generously provided approximately 7,500 of these packs. They have been a timely encouragement to vulnerable individuals and families. Some of the people that have received them are refugees, asylum seeker and migrant communities, international students who are unable to access government assistance, families with special needs children and terminally ill family members, government housing families, homeless communities, the elderly, VCAL and VCE students living away from home, families of students in some of our local schools. Whilst these packs have been an essential part of our COVID response, by far and away, the most valuable part has been the new relationships we've formed. Social isolation, loss of hope, and alarming rates of anxiety are the real needs being expressed by so many. Each emergency relief pack has provided an opportunity to begin meaningful conversations where further relational, emotional, and spiritual resort has been given and offered moving forward. Our emergency relief response has also paved the way for a number of strategic new partnerships with local councils, service providers and small businesses. These exciting new connections will prove invaluable as we look to move into other areas of support for our local communities in the coming season. To each and every person who has sown so generously through this challenging season, thank you. We are so grateful. Your giving has enabled us to assist so many of our community's most vulnerable families. If you'd like to give today, follow the prompt on the screen and please mark your offering communities so it's distributed accordingly. To each of the incredible volunteers serving on our community's teams, thank you. If you'd like to serve on your local community's team, please speak to your location pastor for more information. Thank you so much again, enjoyers. Together we are seeing lives restored and communities transformed. Hey, enjoyers. It's been incredible to hear about our community initiatives and the willingness of so many enjoyers to do something. As we've heard many times before, we may be in lockdown right now, but the church will never ever be shut down. And it's such a blessing to know that our church family is so generous and consistent on every occasion. Today we're going to continue our worship through our giving. The giving options are on the screen and in the chats right now. Church, I love being a part of this amazing, healthy and life-filled church. What we have here is certainly precious and to a degree rare, but it's not by accident. In Matthew 6, 22 and 23, it says, The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. Why is Enjoy Church so generous? I believe one of the reasons is because enjoyers have healthy eyes. If you read the verses before and after the scripture, it's clear that Christ is addressing the issue of materialism. A good or healthy eye therefore is one that is focused on loving God and loving people. I know you heard that one before. And an eye that is selfless. A bad or unhealthy eye is one that is solely focused inwardly or on materialistic gain for oneself. But Enjoy Church, I believe, has good eyes. We are constantly looking out for the needs of people in our church, in the community, and beyond. We generally try to love God and people as much as possible. And that has filled this place with light and life to overflowing. I want to encourage you today to keep your eyes healthy. Keep them lifted and looking out for the needs of the body of Christ, the church and his kingdom. 
Let's look out for all the cities and regions that we have a presence and influence in. And let's look out for the communities where God is calling us to reach beyond. In doing this, we will be filled with light, with influence, with power, with purpose, with vision, and with life. Church, let's pray together. Father God, I thank you that we are part of a generous church. I thank you that you have given us healthy eyes to see beyond ourselves, to see, Lord, the church, to see into the communities, to see into the regions that you have called us into, God. I thank you for every enjoyer. I thank you for the generosity. And I just pray that your blessing will be upon your church. In the name of Jesus, amen. Have a great week, church. Gather your friends because Bloom is coming. It's going to be a great night together. We can't wait to see you there. Hey everyone, tonight at 7.30 p.m. on the Enjoy Church Facebook page and the Enjoy Church YouTube channel, we're going to be doing something that has never been done before in the history of Enjoy Church. Tonight, we're going to be joined live with Pastor Shane and many incredible guests as we have a stack of fun and practical discussion on the topic of lifting our eyes. It's going to be a night of back and forth conversation, not only with those on the live stream, but we're also going to be talking to you as well in the chat. It's going to be a super engaging, incredibly interactive and really insightful time as we all hang out together online tonight. So it's 7.30 p.m. tonight on the Enjoy Church Facebook page or the Enjoy Church YouTube channel. We're going to see you then. Bye, everybody. My kingdom alignment is my kingdom assignment.
Heather enjoys wherever you find yourself today. I hope that you are doing well. From one end of the state of Victoria to the other, we have all sorts of different realities happening. But wherever you find yourself, I'm praying the goodness of the Lord would be upon you. I am praying, we are praying, and I know that you are praying for us. And I just want to say thank you for that. But I do want to take this opportunity right at the beginning, before we even start today, to just say, please, if you need our support, if you need our, our encouragement, if you need anything from us, your pastors, or us, your leadership team, Please be reaching out. Please be reaching in whatever direction you need to reach because we are here to serve you. We want to serve you. We want to be here for you. Now, that said, let's get straight into the Word of God today. I have a word that I believe is going to encourage you no end. So let's turn to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. One of the things I love about Enjoy Church is the myriad of languages and accents amongst us. One of the first and strongest accents we encountered within the early days of Enjoy was Tom and Vivian McDonald, incredible pastors that have played an incredible part in the life of Enjoy Church. Now, the irony is with Tom and Viv's accent is, of course, they were speaking English or at least that's what they say, well, Scottish anyway, which is in theory English. But when they got fired up, when they were speaking passionately, I didn't understand a word that they were saying. And I'm sure the reality would be for so many of us, that would be the case within the wonderful family of what is called Enjoy Church. So as many and as diverse as our languages and accents might be within our church, I'm so glad that we all share a common language with a common accent here at Enjoy. And that's the language of praise. That's right, you say, is praise a language? Absolutely, praise is a language. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. Praise. Praise is a hallmark of a sinner that's been saved by grace. Praise is the echo of a heart that's transitioned from death to life. Praise is the language and the vocabulary that sets the saints apart because an attitude, because of an attitude and a gratitude and a revelation that Jesus Christ is Lord. One time, George and I, we, we flew into Seattle from Canada. And as we were going through customs on that day, we, we gave our passports over to the officer, as you always do. And, and as he looks at my passport, he looks at my passport, then he looks up, he looks at me looks back at my passport, looks at me, looks back at the passport. Then he calls to a superior officer. Now, if you've traveled globally, then you know what I'm talking about. When, when I say that when you're going into, an, uh, into another nation, in, over the borders and through customs, the, these moments, they can be a little unsettling if you're not used to the, the, the customs of that particular place. So as we're going in now into this place, this officer calls his superior officer over. They begin to speak to each other in Spanish. Now, now as you can imagine, this is now getting a little unnerving because not only is there an issue, but now he's called someone else in, a higher ranking officer than he is, and they're having this fairly intense conversation. They, they, they together now are looking at my passport, looking at me, looking at my passport, looking at me. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, what is, what is going on here? What is going wrong here? I've come from, I've come from Canada and I was like, I get it, but what's, what's going on? And at that moment, the superior officer, he lifts his eyes and he says to me, my colleague, he thinks you look like Will Farrell. And I'm like, what? They both start laughing and I'm like, yeah, yeah, good job. Will Farrell, that's right. I look like Will Farrell. Do I look like Will Farrell? But anyway, moving right along. But here's the thing, just as my passport identifies me as being Australian, so is my praise. It's my praise that identifies me as being a child of God and a citizen of heaven. Praise isn't something anyone had to teach me when I became a Christian. And I would think for most of us, praise probably came fairly naturally. In Luke chapter 6, verse 45, it says there, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. And that's where praise comes from. It comes from our hearts. So when my heart is full of thankfulness, when my heart is full of appreciation and gratitude, love, peace, joy, I open my mouth 
And I begin to praise him, the, the one and only son of God, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. I begin to praise God almighty himself. When I think about my life before Christ, I begin to praise his name. I've got to tell you, I can't help but get excited when I think about who I was and where I was before I came into Christ. I just have to give praise to God. When I think about my salvation and how it was that I came to be part of the family of God, I've got to tell you, I, I, I can't help but praise his name. When I think about my family, I want to praise his name. And when I think about my friends, when I think about our church, when I think about you, when I think about all the blessings and the favor and the good grace of God that he has poured out upon us and continues to pour out upon us, I want to kick off my shoes and begin to praise his name. I'm going to tell you, I can't help but want to praise the Lord. But most of all, when I think about who Jesus is and what he's done for us all, I just have to praise his name. I just have to lift up my, my hands and lift up my heart and lift up my voice and give him praise. If you know me, which most of you do, you would have heard me say, I'll praise him in the good times and I'll praise him in the bad times. I'll praise him when it's sunny and I'll pray, praise him when it's raining. You've heard me say it for so many years. Like how, how many years have I been saying it? And the reason is, is because that is my declaration because I know who, who he is and I know what he's done. And over the last 18 months, you've watched me continue to praise the Lord, even though the times haven't necessarily been great and some might even call them rainy days. But why would I continue to praise God in such a way, even when things aren't going the way we would have them go? Why am I able to continue to praise my Jesus when so much of my life at the moment, so much of what I love and I love to do, that which fuels my soul has been stripped away? How is it that I'm still able to praise his name? I'm still able to praise because my praise isn't based on my circumstances or the realities that I find myself in. My praise is based on the revelation of who Christ is and all that he's done. Therefore, in bad times, I will praise him because I know good times are coming. Or on rainy days, I will praise him for I know sunny days are coming. My joy isn't found in my daily realities or my daily circumstances, but my joy is found in the light of my salvation. Therefore, I will praise the Lord. In Psalm chapter 150, reading from verse 1, it says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise him with the strings and the flute. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything, and I say church, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, I've already said that praise is my passport and it's my praise that identifies me as being a child of God and a citizen of heaven. So what do you think it is that the enemy wants to steal from you the most? Of course, he would want to steal your praise because that's one of the most identifying factors of you being a child of God and a citizen of heaven. Over the past few years, identity theft has gone to a whole new level all around the globe. And in the realms of the spirit, it's also gone to another level again as the enemy has worked overtime to steal the praises of God's people. Now I know, and you know, we all know, that there are people watching in today who would say, Shane, how can I praise God? Really, like you, you gotta help a brother out, you gotta help a sister out. How can we praise God? When our, when our circumstances are what they are, when situations, my, my situations and my realities are so dire. And I would say right back to you, my brothers and my sisters, my friends, wherever you find yourself today, with a heart full of love, full of compassion and empathy for you, this is what I would say to you. If your circumstances and your situations and your realities are that dire, then you need to pick up your heavenly passport and you need to begin to praise the Lord. Because it's in the beauty and the splendor and the majesty of who he is and what he's already done that your salvation lies. Therefore, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Church, the devil, he wants to steal your praise and in doing so, steal your identity. In Psalm chapter 19, verse 14, the psalmist writes, May the words of my mouth 
and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my, my rock and my redeemer. First comes your thoughts, your thinking and meditations, and then comes your words, your speech and your declarations. This is why the meditations of your heart are so important. Can I encourage you? Enjoy is everywhere. Brothers and sisters in Christ that are watching, and you may not be part of Enjoy Church, but if you're watching it, I hope you're getting something out of this word today. This is what I want to say to you. This is what I want to say to all of us. We need to be meditating upon the right thing in this season. Because when we meditate upon the wrong things, we're going to end up speaking and proclaiming the wrong things. When we meditate upon the right things, the word of God and his promises, we'll begin to proclaim his truth, speak prophetic utterances and praise his holy name. And it's your praise, church, hear me well today. It's your praise that will set you apart as children of God and as citizen of, citizens of heaven. It's your praise that identifies you as a chosen one. It's your praise that identifies you as being part of a royal priesthood. It's your praise that will identify you as being part of the holy nation. Remember when the apostle Paul had been arrested? I, I love this passage of scripture because you know what I'm like. I'm a little bit of a scallywag in my thinking and I like to try and imagine what is actually happening in all the different scenarios and all the different scenes. And so I want to encourage you as you read the word, because sometimes we can just read through the pages and we're just reading words, we're just reading lines, but I want, to, I want you to slow down. Can I encourage you to slow down and begin to uh, position yourself in the room, begin to position yourself, even as it talks about the different people that are in the room, begin to think, how would they be viewing what's happening here? How would they see what's happening here? Paul has been arrested. Obviously, he didn't just uh, get arrested and end up in this place where he's about to be lashed. No, there's been a process here. He's been arrested. He's been taken to what we would call uh, the police station, or maybe it was a garrison. And, and from there, he's then taken into a dungeon, dungeon area or, or a, a place of interrogation. And, and, and now the, the heat is beginning to come. But this is what it says here in Acts chapter 22, verse 25. As they tied Paul down to lash him. So think about, it. we've gone on all of this journey now to arrive here. Paul said to the officer standing there, is it legal for you to whip a Roman citizen who hasn't even been tried? <laughs> I don't know about you. I love it. It is like the Trump card right there. It's like, boom, take that. And it's like, all of this has occurred. He never once mentioned, not from the time he's been arrested to the point where he's going to be whipped now. He's not mentioned in all of that process or any of that process. Hey, you need to, you need to think about this because I am a citizen of Rome. I, I love it. When he pulled that passport out, that's effectively what he did. When he pulled that line out, he dropped his passport out there. Paul then went on to say how he was a citizen of Rome from birth. I love this. He pulls out his passport, which in turn connects him to his birthrights, at which time all of the officers are stepping away. I, I, I love it. It's like, it's like we need to know who we are in Christ. We need to understand this passport of praise Brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you. This is what will identify you as being a child of God. This is what will identify you as being a citizen of heaven. It's your praise. No one else out there is speaking praise. No one else out there is declaring the goodness of God. No one else out there is lifting up holy hands and worshiping him in places or spaces where it is uncomfortable. It is in your praise. It's in your praise. I want to encourage you today to lift up your praise before God. It will identify you as being a child of God. It will identify you as being a citizen of heaven. And in that space, this is what I love about that. In that space, there is a direct connection between your passport of praise and your birthright as a Christian. This is what Paul did. He, he just waited for that moment to trump everybody in that room. He was like, yeah, yeah, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. And in that moment, it's like, it's like, devil, you might think you've got me by the tail. You might think you've got me in the corner, but I know who I am. He, Paul understood he was a citizen of Rome. You, my brother, you, my sister, are citizens of heaven. How much more should you know who you are? How much more should you be able to bring to the table that passport of praise, no matter what's going on around you, no matter what pressures are coming upon you, no matter who is attacking you, when you lift up your praise, I got to tell you, there's a turnaround about to happen. And that's exactly what happened with Paul. And you know what happened from there. 
he was released. Of course he was released because no one's going to go there. No one is going to whip a citizen of Rome. They just let him go. Friends, I've got to tell you, 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 have, you, have, you have greater authority. You have greater power. You have, you have greater at your hands than you actually realize. If you will lift up your praise and begin to praise the Lord, once, once again, that is your passport, which connects you to your birthright, which connects you to all the promises of God in Jesus' wonderful name. All right, so where do we go next? Daniel, remember Daniel. Daniel effectively became a political prisoner when Nebuchadnezzar besieged Jerusalem. Remember, as you've all read, you've all read the book of Daniel, I'm sure. If you haven't, can I encourage you, go read the book of Daniel. In this time and in this season, it will encourage you greatly with so much going on around the place. The book of Daniel is a must read. I was asked this week, what books are you reading? Go read the book of Daniel, that's what I would say. So, so here he is, Daniel has now become a political prisoner under Nebuchadnezzar and the regime at the time. They gave Daniel a new name, which he had no problem with. You know, there's all sorts of things, all sorts of chatter at the moment. They, they gave Daniel a new name. Daniel's like, whatever, call me whatever you want. I don't care because it's not who I am. It's just my name. It, it wasn't who he was. That wasn't his identity. His identity was in God. So he is like, you can call me whatever. I, I'm not going to have a problem with that. They wanted to give him a new diet. But Daniel spoke to the, the guard considerately. That's re reality. He spoke to him with wisdom and tact. We see wisdom and tact was Daniel's way of doing life. He spoke to him with wisdom and tact. And as a result, he found favor, praise God for favor. So he was able to keep his diet. So you can call me whatever. I don't mind what you want to call me. That's no problem. When it comes to uh, what, what I'm going to eat and what I'm going to partake of, what I'm going to consume, well, can, can we talk about this? And, and he did. He did it considerably and he got a favorable response. But then the new regime wanted him to stop worshiping. Stop worshiping. Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. Now, when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem, which, of course, is where Nebuchadnezzar was. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. Daniel's resolve, <laughs> I love this, was you can have my name, no problem at all. We can talk about my diet, but as for my praise, as for my worship, no discussion will be entered into. Well, as we know, his praise and his worship and his love, adoration and commitment to God became his passport, not only to save his life, but this is what, we, this is what led him to being highly promoted and greatly esteemed in the land. I don't know about you. I want, a, I want, a, I want, a, I want a Daniel spirit to be upon me. That, that says, it doesn't matter what's happening out there. It doesn't matter what people are saying out there. I will worship God. I will praise the Lord. I, I'm going to go home to my house. I'm going to get on my knees. I'm going to lift up my hands and I'm going to worship. And no one can take that from me. When Paul and Silas had been imprisoned, we all know this story. I've used it like a gazillion times. But, but you know what? I just I love the heart of these guys. When Paul and Silas had been imprisoned for doing what? For doing nothing. For delivering a young girl who had been possessed by a demon. For that, they were thrown into jail. Maybe you find yourself today in a hard place through no fault of your own. Maybe even you find yourself in a hard place as a result of doing good. Friends, if that's you, can I encourage you today? Please, please, please don't throw your passport away. Don't hand over your passport. In Acts chapter 16 from verse 25, it says, But about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God. I really like that. They were in prison through no fault of their own. And what did they do when they got there? They were praying and singing hymns of praise to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there came a great earthquake. So the foundations of the prison house were shaken, not stirred, just shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were unfastened. Ha, I love this. In other words, everyone's chains fell off instantly, boom, to the ground. Or they, were, they were free in an instant. They fell off because when they had the choice, the choice to raise their passports high in the air by filling their mouths and the prison where they were in with praise or not, they opened their mouths and they praised the Lord, bringing about their freedom. 
not only did it bring about their freedom, but it brought about the freedom of all those around them and it brought salvation to the jailer and his family. So I say, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. We're living in a time in history where so much of the world is full of trouble, where people are living in fear and uncertainty is all around. But I still say, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise is my passport which connects me to my birthright, which grants me access to all that is mine in and through Christ Jesus. So church, can I encourage you today? Lift up your praise, lift up your praise. I don't know what you've been meditating upon. I don't know what you've been thinking upon. I don't know what you've been saying in days gone by, but I wanna say this to you today, lift up your mouth and fill it with praise. Fill your mouth with praise, you chosen one. Sing loud his praise, you royal priesthood. Declare his praises throughout the nations, you holy people. For surely your salvation is coming. Your salvation is coming. Brothers and sisters everywhere, let's fill our mouths with praise. Let's fill our mind and meditate upon the things above, upon all that Christ has done, upon all who Christ is. Let's be a people who understand that our passport in this season, our passport is praise. This is what identifies us as being the people of God, his chosen people, his children. We, we are his and he is ours. Can I encourage you? Fill your mouth with praise now and begin to declare the good things of God. Friends, I want to encourage you all over the place. Let's let this week be a time where we declare the praises of of our God. You might be like, let this week, why don't we do it every week? I'd encourage you to do it every week for the rest of your life. I'd encourage you to do it every day for the rest of your life. Let praise continually be on your lips. But in all of our meetings, can I encourage you, wherever, whatever meetings you're stepping into this week, bring a praise report. Bring a praise report. Tell of the good things God has done. Maybe as families, when you sit down and you say grace together, can I encourage you, bring a praise report to the family table. Can I encourage you, enjoy as those that belong to staff around the enjoy world. When you're having meetings, bring praise reports. Can I encourage you on Instagram, on Facebook, wherever you find yourself, let's be a people who lift up our voice, whatever voice we have, whether that be your natural voice, whether that be on social media platforms, wherever you find yourself, can I encourage you, fill your mouth with praise now. That is your passport. It will connect you to your birthright and it will cause, it will cause the promises of God to be yes and amen in your life. And everybody said together, amen and amen. Now, here's the thing I'm aware today there's people that are watching in and you may not be connected to God therefore I can understand you're not praising at all full stop I get that if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior this this message is like how does it work for me it works like this if you will make Jesus Christ your Lord like I made him my Lord then he will be your Lord and the moment he comes into your life all of a sudden I can promise you peace is going to come Peace is going to come. Forgiveness is going to come. Joy is going to come. The, the weight of sin will be lifted and you'll begin to see like you have never seen before. I want to encourage you, if you want to be able to step into this space of praise, which will connect you to your passport, which will connect you to a birthright, which will make uh, all the promises of God accessible to you, can I encourage you, make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior right here, right now. In fact, you know, the Bible tells us that we've all sinned. We all know that. We don't need to be told that. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible says the wages for that sin is death, but the free gift of God is salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Right there. Boom. That's what we all need. We need Jesus Christ as our Lord. So if you're watching in today, whether you be watching on our online platform or a Facebook platform, can I encourage you, if you're on the online platform and you want to give your life to Jesus, there's a little raised hand on the bottom right hand side of our online platform that says, I want to give my life to Christ. Just right now, hit that little raised hand. That's it. Just hit that little raised hand. Praise God. Maybe, maybe if you're watching on, on a Facebook platform, uh, there's a comment section down the bottom. I just want to encourage you now, right in that comment section there, I want to give my life to Christ. Just type that in there. I want to give my life to Christ. If you hit that raised hand or you write in that comment section, someone from our team is going to reach out to you and help you in your decision that you've made today. Friends, I want to encourage you. If you've just given your life to Christ by hitting the raised hand or writing in the comment section, I want to encourage you, let's pray together. In fact, enjoy us everywhere. Why don't we pray together and just give our life to Jesus right here, right now. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I thank you today for bringing me to this place that I might give my life to you. Today, Jesus, 
I ask you, come into my life. Forgive me of my sin and help me, Lord, to live a life that is both pleasing and honoring of you. Today, Lord, I give you my life. I give you my all. And I believe from this day on, you are my God, my Lord, my Savior, and my friend. And from this day on, I am your child and I'll never be alone again. I ask you, Jesus, help me, Lord, to always have my mouth full of praise. I praise you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and for all that you're doing. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen and amen. God bless you, enjoyers. Know that we love you. We're praying for you. We're, we're super excited uh, about, about looking down the track, believing that as we prepare our hearts and we prepare our lives and our church, we're believing that 22, yeah, 2022 is going to be an amazing year. Know that we're praying for you. We love you. We're believing for you in Jesus' wonderful name. God bless you. I'll hand it back to the host now. God bless and bye for now. If you said yes to giving your life to Christ, you've made an amazing decision today. We would love to celebrate and help you with your next step. On screen is a link to fill out a quick form and someone from our New Christians team will connect with you this week. Now remember, here at Enjoy Church, say it with me. No one stands alone. So if you need any prayer, care or support during this time, as always, we are here for you. On screen is a QR code that you can scan and fill out all your details and someone from the team will be in touch. This week, let's continue to encourage and reach out to one another. We love you, we are praying for you and we hope to see you online soon again. Bye. Bye. Welcome back kids to Kid Mania time. This is Cam. And this is Carlo and we're live from our studio up in space to bring you volume two of God of Wonders. Yeah, this is, what have you got there? Well, so this, this is a very special character. It's from like a, a movie or series that you might not know. So he's called R2D2 from the movie Lord of the Rings, right? So the premise is about- From Hogsworth. From Hogsworth, yeah, yeah. So he's trying to become a wizard in a land um, called, uh, no, he went through a wardrobe and went to this land with the Lion King or something like that. But yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's it's I very don't know if advanced. True. <laughs> I think it's pretty real. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. What, what are these eggs here for? Uh, to eat, you know. These becomes, you know, you know fried chickens from KFC? I, they start as this. I feel like this isn't gonna go well <laughs> these eggs today. <laughs> so stick around guys, we'll see what happens to this egg and to this little robot. And yeah, we'll see you soon. Our body is made up of very important organs that are essential for us to live. Let's have a closer look at some of these organs. The heart. Our heart organ can beat up to 115,000 times per day. Wow, that's a lot. The heart pumps blood through the blood vessels around our body. The kidneys. Kidneys are two bean-shaped organs. Their function is to maintain the body's chemical balance and they also filter blood through your body. The liver. Our liver is the largest solid organ in our body. It cleans our blood and even stores energy called glycogen. The stomach. Our stomach digests food and helps to fight infection when we are sick. When you drink soft drink, you can get air in your stomach. And the best way to get rid of that air is to burp. Lungs. Our lungs are like sponges. They allow us to breathe in air and provide oxygen for our body. The left lung is actually a little smaller than the right lung so as to leave enough room for your heart. The brain. Our brain is the control center of our body. It tells the body what to do and it is why you are able to think. It is better than the greatest computer ever invented. The brain floats in the fluid inside our skull and scientists still don't know exactly how the brain fully works. Intestines. We have a small intestine and a large intestine. The small intestine absorbs nutrients from food you eat and the large intestine absorbs the water. God has created us so wonderfully and so perfectly 
We are amazingly designed. For this challenge, you will need four eggs and two serving trays. The first person to do a lap of the cones and back carrying the eggs on the trays without dropping them is the winner. Are you ready? In three, two, one. <laughs> You've cracked the eggs! Go along, sucker! <laughs> hey kids, welcome back! That was a fun challenge, how did you go? Because I think I would have done poorly because my body doesn't move like a worm like those people. I've seen them wiggling and wiggling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That made me wondering, what's your favourite part of your body, Cam? I would say my stomach because it allows me to eat. And uh, you? Right, mine is my incredibly big muscles. That's uh, just intimidating, honestly. <laughs> honestly. <laughs> and I like, I like your answer as well, like stomach so you can eat, yeah. drink. Probably like me drinking this massive bowl of um, cordial, right? Or maybe like me eating this egg. Oh, no way! No way! <laughs> hey kids, welcome to the second part of our God of Wonders series. In this session, we will continue to discover and be amazed at the awesomeness of God and His creation. But this time, we will take a look at us, humans, and see how wonderfully made we are. When I think about creation and learn more about how incredible the universe and human body are, I can't help but believe that God created it all. Everything needed for creation to happen and to have life on earth was so perfectly planned that it shows me God did this on purpose. Let me give you an example. This book that I'm holding in my hands, did it just come from nothing and land in my hands from nowhere? or? was this book created? Did someone create this book and design it on purpose with words on the pages, pictures, and a front cover? Obviously, yes, this book was purposefully created by an author. You see kids, someone made this book on purpose. It didn't just appear out of nothing. There had to have been an author of this book who wrote it and designed it for us to enjoy. And it's the same with God's creation. It didn't just appear out of nothing and accidentally everything was perfectly and wonderfully made. Instead, our powerful and intelligent God specifically designed and made all the universe and everything in it on purpose, including you. It was all created by a creator. How amazing is that? Just think about that for a moment. You were designed by God himself and on purpose. I love that thought. All right, are you ready for some more amazing fun facts that show us how amazing God is? Okay, here we go. Fact number one, babies have more bones than adults. When babies are born, some of their bones are separate and as they grow up, the bones join together. God has designed our body in such an amazing way. Fact number two, our eyes are an amazing thing. Before we were born and in our mother's womb, our eyeballs were covered with skin. Then an amazing thing happens. Are you ready for this? That skin miraculously separates and allows us to see for the first time. Thank God for that. So we can all see all the beautiful creation that God has made. There are so many more facts about our human body that it is just mind blowing. Each fact points towards God's amazing intelligence and power. In our first part of this series, we looked at scriptures that talked about God's wondrous creation. Here are more scriptures that mention this. Psalms chapter 139 verse 13. You made my whole being. You formed me in my mother's body. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. So God created human beings in His image. 
In the image of God, he created them. He created them male and female. These are just some of the scriptures that mention the mighty works of our amazing God in his creation of you. But there are a whole lot more that you can read in the Bible. Just as the wonders of the universe are so beautifully created, so are you beautifully created. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, Before I made you in your mother's womb, I chose you. Before you were born, I set you apart for a special work. God is telling us that He has chosen us specifically and has a purpose just for us in this world and His kingdom. And you are so, so important to God. In fact, God even knows how many hairs are on your head. It's true. You can check that out in Matthew chapter 10, verse 30. That's how important you are to God. Of all the beautiful things that God created in the universe, you are the most beautiful. You are the most precious and you are the most valued. It was for you that God gave His only Son, Jesus. Not for anything else that He created, but for you and for me. Maybe we will never know all of what God has created in our universe. People are finding out more and more discoveries about our planet and the universe all the time. And the more we discover, the more amazed I am at how powerful and creative our Father God is. And I can't help but be blown away by His surprises that He has placed all around us, waiting to be discovered. Our final scripture to sum up this series is Psalms chapter 139, verse 14. I praise you because you made me in an amazing and wonderful way. What a beautiful scripture that confirms how wonderfully made we are. Remember kids, that this very awesome and powerful God who created everything is the same God who loves you and is with you. He is your father and he calls you his child. How awesome and wonderful is that? Be blessed kids. Hi kids and welcome to another episode of Quizmaster. Are you guys ready to get your quiz on? Awesome, let's go. Trivia question number one. The Bible tells us that God created us humans. Is it A, true or is it B, false? That's right, it is A, true. Trivia question number two. Before we are born into the world, what miraculously happens to our eyes? A, they disappear. B, the skin on the eyeballs miraculously separate, allowing us to see. Or C, the skin closes up. You guessed it, that's right kids. It is B, the skin on the eyeballs miraculously separates, allowing us to see. Trivia question number three. The scripture, I praise you because you made me in an amazing and wonderful way is found in A, Luke 2.15, B, Proverbs 11.9, or in C, Psalms 139.14. That's right, it is actually C, Psalms 139.14. Trivia question number four. Of all the beautiful things that God created in the universe, what is the most beautiful and the most precious? Is it A, planets, B, oceans, or C, us humans? That's right, it is C, us humans. Trivia question number five. The scriptures we read in today's lesson tell us that God has a plan and a purpose for us, and we are purposely made. Is it A, true, or is it B, false? You guessed it again. Yes, it is A, true. What do we what? have here? What do we have? This incredible concoction in front of us is a mixture of this thing called gut dust, aka corn flour, and water. So I'm going to help you make some of this. So what you do is, kids, follow along if you can. Uh, you is one to part, me. one part corn flour. So just fill, fill it up to the brim, to the top, to the top, and then you add that to the mixture. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Yep, yep, yep. And then you add half of that in water. 
There you go. And so what we're making here is something called Ouble. Say it with me kids, Ouble. Ouble. Just like yeah. Michael Ouble. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> now, let's mix this around. So look at, get our hands in there. It's a bit, ooh, it's a bit difficult, actually. So what's gonna happen is... Get those muscles working. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, it's going everywhere. You know what it's missing? An egg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, it's coming together. It's now it's coming together well, guys. <laughs> so what you'll find is that it, it stays hard if you keep moving around, but once you let go... So if I let go now, so it's hard, but... <laughs> <laughs> and if I let go now... So it becomes this gooey consistency, just like cheese, <laughs> if you melt it. <laughs> I think that's all we have time for today, guys. <laughs> If you love today's episode, you can re-watch it again on YouTube, mm -hmm. Kid Mania Time. Um, and please like and subscribe, and you can watch all our past mm. weeks as well. We'll see you again <laughs> next week, guys, for another episode of Kid Mania. Take care. Bye. Have a good week. <laughs>